Let's talk about Amnesty International, the morally bankrupt Amnesty International, who continue to take the sides of the enemy and terrorists and all the Islamists. So this one is about this man, Walid Dhaka, one of the Palestinian prisoners, an actual criminal who was in prison in Israel. And now the Amnesty International side are having a meltdown. They've done this uh, post uh, saying the death in custody of Walid Dhaka, a 62-year-old Palestinian writer who was the longest serving Palestinian prisoner in Israel, jailed after 38 years of imprisonment, is a cruel reminder of Israel's disregard for Palestinians' right to life. <clears throat> Palestinians' right to life, right? The same Israel that continues to allow, until 7th of October, Palestinians from Gaza or wherever, or the West Bank, to go to Israel to get educated, to get the medical treatment, and to work. Yes, the same evil Israel. But what's going on with this? This Palestinian writer, who is Walid Dhaka? In case you want to know the truth that Amnesty International are telling you, you must look at this face. That was Moshe Tamam. He was an Israeli, a young man whose life was taken by Walid and his gang. Of millions. That's what happened. That's what happened in the 1980s. Israel War Room uh, posted this uh, saying Walid Dhaka the kidnapped 19 year old and held him hostage for two days. He also rallied the troops, tortured, abducted him, kidnapped him, and of course, at the end, took his life. But apparently, Walid Dhaka is simply a Palestinian writer, and he has a right to life. Israel Warum said, you seem to be confused about who shows disregard for the right to life. That is a reality. But Amnesty International did this post. Amnesty International has campaigned for Walid Dhaka since last August, calling on Israel authorities to release him. On humanitarian grounds, citing independent medical option, uh, opinion that Walid Dhaka's uh, days were numbered and the fact that Walid Dhaka had already completed his 37-year sentence in March 2023. But an earlier court ruling sentenced him to two additional years in prison over his involvement in getting mobile phones to other prisoners to help them contact their families putting off his release date until March 2025, a day which he tragically did not live to see. So not only they are defending actual criminals <clears throat> who take people's lives, innocent people's lives, they seem to be okay with the prisoners breaking the rules in prison. They, they seem, seem to be okay. Yeah, he was, he was just smuggling phones. Why did you have to add an additional two years? He, he did nothing. He just wanted to talk to their families. Two months before October 7th that happened. Yeah, that doesn't sound dodgy at all. Amnesty International.